One of my favorite things to do is to share my opinion on the internet. Sometimes it works out fine, but other times it doesn't. Not too long ago, Cat Icarus made a video on his top 10 unpopular gaming opinions, and my friend Arizo did a video on his 5 unpopular Pokemon opinions, and I have made the brave, bold decision to throw my hat into the ring and do it on my 10 unpopular Nintendo opinions. This list is in no particular order, and I hope you guys understand that this is my opinion, and I will try my best to explain my reasonings for these entries. But if you leave a dislike, I really won't blame you. My opinion can get pretty crazy sometimes. Alright, let's get started, shall we? Splatoon is a little boring. I want to get out of the way that I like Splatoon. I like the graphics, and I like the idea of taking a genre like shooters and making it more appealing to everyone, unlike games like Call of Duty. But I have to admit that I haven't touched the thing in months. Recently, I have been trying to pick it back up, but it hasn't been the same. When I first got the game back when it first came out, I played it non-stop and got to level 20 rather quickly. Now I am only level 23. Yeah, not very impressive, I must say. That's because the game lacked features that kept me coming back. Even with constant updates like adding more and more weapons and maps and adding new modes like tower control, I don't know, it's not a bad game, just a tad boring. I like the controls from Kid Icarus Uprising. As long as I'm saying the controls are good, then I might as well start praising the game. I like the graphics, the level design, the humor and characters, and I do like the controls. I really do like this game, and I guess as a bonus unpopular opinion, I do think this is one of the best games for the 3DS. For the controls, I never minded them, I always felt they were responsive and weren't a pain. I will admit I would have preferred this game on let's say the Wii or maybe the Wii U with pointer controls or dual analog sticks, but the combo of using the circle pad to move and using the stylus to move the cursor and pressing L to shoot really wasn't that bad. Come on Sakurai, where's our sequel? I like Skyward Sword more than Ocarina of Time. I feel like I'll be wasting my time with this one because this one alone will make that dislike skyrocket, but allow me to explain. In the areas Ocarina of Time beats Skyward Sword in are maybe the dungeons and the fact that it isn't that linear compared to Skyward Sword, but in everything else, Skyward Sword is much better. Visually the game is beautiful, with great use of colors this game looks like I just jumped into a painting. The music is also very catchy with songs that made me feel like I was actually flying. Even the characters were much more memorable, like Groose, Gearhim, and Zelda herself. In Ocarina of Time, I really can't remember too many characters. And going back to the whole linear thing, yes Skyward Sword is linear, but so was Ocarina of Time. There was always a certain order to the dungeons you had to complete, so I don't want to hear that Ocarina of Time wasn't linear. Also, Fee wasn't that bad, guys. I mean, she was a little, but I still feel like she was better than Navi. I want to make a video just for Skyward Sword one day, so I don't want to say too much. I lack Ocarina of Time, it's just that if I was given the option between the two, I would pick Skyward Sword. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. 4 is better than Melee. This one isn't too bad because I know a good amount of people that do like this game more than Melee, but it's still a pretty big deal since the majority of people think that Melee is still better. The reason I like Smash 4 more is because I like that really anyone can play. In Melee, if you want to even try and stand a chance, then you have to learn things like wave dashing and other techniques that I can't think of right now. In Smash 4, if you want to get good, then you just have to learn the basics like spot dodging, and even more complex stuff like teching isn't that hard to learn or understand. Also, my main is Cloud. Pokemon X and Y are my least favorite in the series. This is another one that I feel like will get the most hate, but again, allow me to explain. First of all, I would argue that Pokemon-wise, this is the most forgettable. The only Gen 6 Pokemon I like are Trevenant, Gudra, and my favorite being Noivern. The others are just meh. 
The starters are trash, except for Greninja, of course, and the others are just very forgettable. I don't like Team Flare, they're too generic and they felt like a step down from great evil teams like Team Galactic and Team Plasma. I don't like the fairy typing, and I just think overall the games were very underwhelming for me. Now you may be thinking, oh well Zelda, you have to admit the Mega Evolutions are cool. And you're right, they were cool. Emphasis on were. Now, Mega Evolutions are dumb. They would have been a cool way to make a useless Pokemon more useful, but they ended up giving it to Pokemon like Metagross, Rayquaza, and Garchomp. And did Charizard and Mewtwo really need two Mega Evolutions? It also took me three weeks, three weeks to beat this game. Not because it's a long game, but because it's so boring. I had to eventually force myself to sit down and beat it. This game was, in my opinion, a little overhyped, and even now I feel like too many people ignore the flaws of this game. <laughs> Can't wait for that dislike bar to go up. Super Mario Sunshine is my favorite 3D Mario game. I don't think this one is that far-fetched, but popular opinion is that Super Mario 64 and the Galaxy games are better and that this is the black sheep of the series, but in my opinion this is arguably the best one because of the more interesting hub world that is Isle Delfino. I also really like the level design, these really did feel like places you could take a vacation to, like a beach. You know, just ignore the quacker things and the giant rampaging caterpillar, and you're all good. Probably the best thing in this game has to be Flood, he made the game much more interesting and made it really stand out from any of the other games. This is one that I really want Nintendo to make a sequel or maybe even an HD remake. The voice acting is kinda trash, but I still found it enjoyable. I think the Wii U is better than the PS4 and Xbox One. Now this one for sure is going to sound ridiculous, but I have my reasons. For starters, I do think it has better games. That includes first party, third party, single player, and multiplayer. For the single player first party games, Nintendo still did not disappoint, with games like Super Mario 3D World, Wind Waker HD, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Yoshi's Woolly World, Super Mario Maker, and Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. And for their multiplayer, you got Super Smash Bros., Mario Kart 8, and Splatoon, and a lot of those games I mentioned before can be played with multiple people. The third party isn't huge, but games like Bayonetta 2 and The Wonderful 101 are still great games that all Wii U owners should get. With the PS4, it has Uncharted 4, The Last of Us Remastered, and Ratchet and & Clank. Other than that, I can't think of too many great standout exclusives. And for the Xbox, well, it has Gears of War and Halo. That's something. Again, the third party is what makes you buy those consoles, but for me, it's all about the great exclusives and the Wii U delivers. Some games are even better on the Wii U, like Rayman Legends and Shovel Knight. I think the biggest thing, for me at least, is the fact that the PS4 is out in the living room and the Wii U is in my room. Whenever someone is home, they're always in the living room, either watching TV or watching a movie. So the only times I can play the PS4 is if no one is home or if I ask if I can borrow the TV to play. For the Wii U, I don't have to worry about that. Even if I did, there is an off-TV play option. I'm sure if things were different that I would like the PS4 more, but for now, my console of choice is the Wii U. I think the GameCube is Nintendo's best console. I know, I know, what about the N64 and the SNES? Well, the SNES I didn't grow up with, so I can't really say much about that, but I will say that some of my favorite games like Super Mario World, A Link to the Past, Donkey Kong Country, and Super Metroid are on the SNES. With the N64, I think it lacked things like third-party supports, although again, I will admit that Rareware kinda made up for that, but the GameCube had almost everything. It has a comfortable controller, great first-party single-player games like Wind Waker, Super Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, and Animal Crossing. And the third-party support was great, we got Beautiful Joe, Beyond Good and Evil, and we even for a while had Resident Evil 4 as an exclusive. I would argue it's still the best version of the game, it's just a shame no one really appreciated the console at the time. At least now it's getting the love. I f 
hate Paper Mario Color Splash. Sorry for the language there, it's just that I don't understand the good reviews for this game. It's better than Sticker Star, sure, but that's not saying much since both are pretty awful. First of all, once again, there is no leveling up in this game. So once again, battles are useless and avoiding them becomes something you will do a lot. They try to fix this, kinda, by rewarding you with paint and these little hammers that, when you collect enough, your paint storage will increase. But my argument is that your paint is used for the cards in battle. So if you just avoid them, then you won't use your paint or any of your cards. And coins are freaking everywhere, man, so you will never really run low. Also, if the reward is paint, then all you get from fights is just wasting your cards. But, but wait, you really don't end up running out of cards since, again, cards are very plentiful and combat is just long and tedious, with the whole thing of using the Wii U gamepad to flick the cards at the screen. Also, if I had a nickel for every time I had to backtrack and go through the levels I already completed just to get one thing I missed, I would have enough money to buy 20 copies of The Thousand Year Door, a much better Paper Mario game. Paper Mario Color Splash? More like Paper Mario Color Trash. And finally, I like Donkey Kong Country 1 more than Donkey Kong Country 2. I don't think this one is as crazy as the other ones, but the popular opinion is that Donkey Kong Country 2 is the best in the series, with Donkey Kong Country just barely behind it. But in my opinion, DKC is just barely better. I think the main thing is that this was the first game that I have ever played, and because of that, it has a more special place in my heart. Also, both games are hard, but I can beat the first game. I still cannot beat the second game, even to this day. It's probably because I suck ass when it comes to this game, but I always felt like whenever I died in the first game, it was always something I could eventually get past as long as I kept trying. In the second game, it felt like whenever I died, I just wanted to give up because I just couldn't see how I could possibly get past it. DKC2 is a great game, but I just like the first one a bit more.